The equation of a tangent and normal at any point of a curve. This is part of the calculus section of my ultimate revision guide of further maths GCSE. Um, if you want to go back to the index for calculus, then you can click on this index button and any questions that I've done, uh, exam, past exam questions I've done on this topic, I'll put links to down in this bar down here. Okay, so um, been able to work out uh, the equation of a tangent and also the equation of a normal at any point touching a curve where you're given the equation of the curve. Okay, let's uh, run through some of the basic ideas of this. Um, the key idea is um, we, we find out the gradient of the tangent by differentiating the curve and picking the point that we're given to then give us the gradient of the tangent. Um, so the, 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 the gradient function gives us the tangent at any point. So the gradient of the tangent at any point. Um, and the normal, the connection between the tangent Ooh, tangent and the normal is that if the tangent is um, got a gradient of g, then the normal's gradient um, is m minus one divided by g. So if g is um, two, for example, then the normal is minus one over two. If the tangent was minus two thirds, then the normal is, well, minus of that, which makes it a plus. So we just change the sign. And if it's a fraction, we turn the fraction upside down. So it becomes 3 over 2. So if we were given it as a decimal, so say, for example, it was um, 2.5, um, we'd have to do minus 1 over 2.5. We could do that if we had a calculator available. But it's easier if we change that to a fraction. 2.5 2 is 5 halves. And so the... the uh, the gradient of the normal will be minus, then we turn the fraction upside down to get 2 over 5. So it's much easier to deal with fractions in these sort of questions than it is to deal with decimals. So I would, I would uh, encourage you to stay away from decimals. I don't think um, they're particularly tricky, the, the numbers used in these questions, because it's only a GCSE exam, not an A-level exam, but um, still better better for the future if you start dealing with fractions rather than, than, than going to decimals. Okay, um, a good idea would be to try and have a go at these questions before I go through them. Um, so pause the video and then I'll go through it in a minute. Okay, question one. Work out the tangent to the curve, the equation of the tangent to the curve, y equals x squared minus 3x plus 5 at the point 1, 3. So this is pretty standard, it's, it's going to be very routine, same thing over and over again. So we do the tangent. We need to find the gradient first. So we need to do the gradient of the tangent first. Okay, to find the gradient, we need to differentiate the curve function. So dy by dx, um, differential of x squared is 2x, differential of minus 3x is minus 3, differential of 5 is nothing. So that's our, that's our gradient function. So this will tell us the gradient of any tangent to the curve. Um, we want the tangent where x equals three, and y uh, sorry x equals one and y equals three. Well, the y equals three isn't that important, um, but the x equals one is. The, the y equals three will be be useful in a minute. So the dy by dx when x equals one, dy by dx equals two lots of one minus three. Two lots of one is two. Take away three is minus one. So our gradient is minus one. So now we use the um, general equation for. Um, a line which is y equals mx plus c where m is the gradient we just worked out the gradient so that's minus 1x plus a constant no minus 1x is just minus x so um, from here we have everything we need apart from this number here to work out this number we just use the point we know that our line is going to go through our, our line must go through 1 3 so what when x is 1 y must be equal to 3 so we find the number that makes that true so when x equals 1 y equals 3 which tells me that 3 is equal to minus 1 lots of 1, which is just minus 1, plus the c, which we don't know. So c must be equal to 4, because, because minus 1 plus 4 is 3. So that tells us our equation is y equals minus x plus 4. We could write that a bit neater. We could put y equals 4, uh, 4 minus x. I don't know why I started putting an x before I put the minus, but there we go. 
four minus x. Okay, so that's that's a pretty standard opening. This question is virtually the same, except for we're doing the normal. So we, when we get to this point where we got the gradient at the point, we just need to use the idea I showed you on the start, um, where we do the negative reciprocal. So we change the sign and we turn the fraction upside down if it's a fraction, or divide one divided by the whole number if it's not a fraction. So um, gradient function. We need to find the gradient of the tangent, and then we can find the gradient of the normal because the, they're connected. So divide by the x, differential of x cubed is 3x squared. Differential of uh, x is just 1 because it's 1x, and the minus 2 disappears. So we have the gradient is going to be when x equals minus 1. Uh, that implies our gradient is going to be 3 lots of minus 1 squared plus 1. And 3 lots of minus 1 squared. Well, that minus 1 squared is 1 times by 3 is 3 plus 1 is 4. So the gradient is 4. So y equals, ah, so that's the, be careful here, get a bit carried away. That's the gradient of the tangent. So the normal gradient is equal to minus 1 over four because we take this number that we got from the tangent and we divide it into one. If it was a fraction we turn it upside down, we change the sign. So y equals minus a quarter x, because that's our gradient, plus a number we've yet to find. Okay, now this is slightly different to the last one. The last one we got given the x and the y coordinate. We've got to do a bit of extra work here. We're told the x coordinate, we're gonna to have to work out our y coordinate from the curve. So we know uh, when x equals minus one y equals minus 1 cubed plus minus 1 minus 2. Minus 1 cubed is minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 1 and we've got minus 2 and that's minus 4 so y equals minus 4. So now we know that x is minus 1 when minus, uh, what, sorry, y is minus 4 when x is minus 1 so that tells us that minus 4 using this equation that we started creating is equal to minus a quarter lots of minus one plus the constant. Minus a quarter times minus one is just a quarter, so we've got minus four equals a quarter plus the constant. So the constant is going to be equal to minus four take away a quarter, which is minus four and a quarter. So C is going to be minus four and one quarter. So our equation is y equals minus a quarter x, uh, not plus because it's minus, minus four and a quarter. Okay, we could tidy this up, although it says to have it in this form. If we times three out by four, that would get rid of the fractions. We'd have four y equals minus x, and then this would be 17, minus 17. But because it's in the y equals, we have to leave it like this. Okay, so look at question three. Work out the equation of the normal to the curve y equals 6 minus x squared at the point p is 1, 5. So just like the last one, we need to do um, dy by dx to get the gradient of the tangent. So that would be 6, sorry, not 6, because that disappears. Because we differential of 6 is nothing. Um, then we've got minus x squared differentiated, so that's minus times by 2, which is minus 2x to the power of 1. So that tells us when x equals 1, dy by dx equals minus 2 lots of 1, which is minus 2. So the equation of the normal, so that's the tangent, so that's the tangent gradient equals minus 2, therefore normal gradient equals, change the sign, turn it upside, well divide it into 1, so it's just a half. So that tells us that y, sorry not y, yes y, that tells us that y is going to be equal to a half of x plus a constant. And we know that this time we're given x and the y, so we don't have to work out the y, so it saves a bit of time. So when x equals 1, y 
equals five. So five equals half of one plus a number. Half of one is a half. Take that away, we get four and a half equals the number. So y equals a half of x plus four and a half. Again, we could multiply three by two to make the numbers nicer, but we don't need to. Um, B, the normal intersects the curve again at Q, work out the coordinates of Q. Okay, now helps sometimes if you've got a handle on what the graph looks like. So the minus x squared graph is it is an upside down U shape, so an N shape. And we're adding six to it, so it's going up through six, then down. So that's the point six. And we've got the point one five is here. And we have just worked out um, the normal to that. So the line that goes through there at right angles to the gradient. And that's going to, again, touch the curve down here. So the normal intersects the curve again at Q. So this is going to be Q. This is P. That was 1, 5. We've got to work out what Q is. OK. And the only real way to do that is to use our equation for our normal and our equation for the curve and see where they cross. So we're going to solve them simultaneously. So we know that y equals 6 minus x squared. We also know that y equals a half x plus 4 and a half. If we just make those two equal because they're both equal to y, we've got 6 minus x squared equals a half x plus 4 and a half. And we have to solve that. Um, So let's get it all onto one side. I'm going to move the x squared over to this side um, to make it positive. So I'm going to have the zero on this side. We're going to add the x squared. We've got a plus a half x. We've got four and a half take away six, which is minus one and a half. Okay, don't really like having halves in a, an equation to solve. So I'm going to change it to um, whole numbers by multiplying throughout by two. Zero times two is nothing. 2x squared times this by 2 is plus x times this by 2, 1 half times 2 is 3. Now, I already know a solution to this because I've already found one is when x equals 1. So one of the solutions is where x equals 1. So x minus a half must be the factor because x equals 1 is a solution. So that makes that 0. So that makes it fairly easy to figure out what the other bit is because we've got 2x to make 2x squared. This has got to be plus 3 to make this minus 3 when I multiply these two. Just checking it through, I've got minus, uh, minus 2x plus 3x, and that gives us the plus x in the middle. So that tells me that x um, equals, well, I'll change the sign and divide by the 2, so I get minus 3 over 2. So minus 3 over 2 times by 2 is minus 3, plus 3 is 0, so that's what makes that 0. When I'm solving these, I'm trying to figure out what makes the bracket 0. So that's the x coordinate. So the y coordinate, I can use either this equation or this equation. Um, I'm running out a bit of space here, so I'm going to I'm going to use the the simple equation. So a half of x, so a half of minus three over two plus four and a half. Okay, so so a half of that is going to be uh, minus three over four plus four and a half. Um, to cut a long story short, that's three and three quarters. So that tells me that x is minus three and a half, uh, so three halves, and y is um, three and three quarters. Okay, well, that's a, that a very tricky question to finish with. That's quite a difficult one, um, especially to finish that off. You're using a, an algebra technique um, in the middle of some calculus which is the way these things go when you go to A level, but uh, at GCC level that's quite advanced technique. <laughs>